Watercolour is such an amazing medium, but because it's wet, it can be difficult to control. And sometimes, no matter what, the painting doesn't go right. I'm going to be showing you how to find little treasures in your paintings that didn't quite work out and create cards and smaller paintings. I really hope you're going to find this tutorial inspiring and helpful and kind of give you confidence in the watercolours that you do and hope that even though the painting doesn't quite work out, you can actually kind of find a little treasure so that you can actually frame or create a little greeting card out of an offcut of an old watercolour painting that didn't go quite right. So shall we get started? So here are all my materials that I'm going to be using to create little mini paintings and cards. And I've got a lot of variety of different cards here. And I hope you're going to find that useful because you may not be able to get access to all the cards I'm using. So I've got lots and lots of alternatives. The frames that I'm going to use as well, I'll go into a little bit more detail. But I will put a link in the description of some of the materials that I'm using here. So I hope you find that helpful. But I've got a paper trimmer as well, some scissors, a pen to sign my name, <laughs> um, a glue stick and a pencil as well and a cutting mat. So the most important thing I've got is the paintings as well, the sort of rough cuts and paintings that didn't go quite right. Actually, this is a painting here that I did a while ago but um, I, I wasn't quite happy with the results. So I actually did it again for another YouTube video. It was actually originally for a video. So here is the actual painting that I uploaded onto YouTube, the demonstration. But um, I was sort of left with this and I quite like it. And I thought it'd be quite nice to make some cards out of this. So we'll have a look and see what we can do there. This was a painting that um, I really love this area here, but I felt it got a little bit busy here. I have got this tutorial on YouTube, but um, the overall effect I wasn't 100% happy with. So, but I really like this area here. So I'm going to see if I can do something with that as well. This one here I did quite a while ago. I really actually quite like this painting, but I don't feel I'll go as far as framing it. But there are some sections here that look quite magical. So it'd be just interesting just to see if they it would make some nice, either nice cards or a nice frame picture so I'm gonna gonna check that out later in this tutorial. This is one of my abstract paintings which I thoroughly loved doing and there are some really kind of cool textures and darks and lights here so I'm gonna also try and see if I can uh, get some little magical paintings out of that or I might just leave it as a whole. Now I have actually got a tutorial of this painting on YouTube. Um, this one I actually did afterwards and it got a little bit smudgy here and there and I thought it'd be quite a nice one to experiment to see um, if I can get maybe a smaller painting out of it or again a greeting card. This I think would be the final one for this tutorial. It was a bluebells in the hedgerow and I took the photograph myself. I love the light here, the textures, the bluebells, the little daisies. But again, as a whole, I felt I lost my light here a little bit, loved my light here. And sometimes with watercolours, we just overwork things. It doesn't quite work out. But um, I think there might be some magical little cards here. So I'm quite excited to investigate this further. So what I've got here is a selection of cards and I've got a couple of little mini mounts here as well. These mounts here came with the ready-made frames. And here are the frames. And there's lots of different types of frames that you can find on Amazon and other arts shops and things like that. So check those out. I will put a link for these frames in the description. Sometimes they do go out of stock. So you can just sort of search for something similar to this. It's quite nice when they have got a ready-made mount so you don't have to worry about buying mounts and fitting into frames, etc. And they're very good value as well. This is a little square card here. It's about 13 by 13 centimeters. And as you can see, there's a little cutout aperture there. So what you do is you actually put your painting here and then push it over like that so it's protected. You can sort of tape it down here and then you've got your sort of painting protected and you can write your greeting here. I'm also just going to use this ordinary sort of quite thin cream paper card. They're Anita cards. I'll put a link for these cards in the description. 
um, but it's quite a small sort of rectangular size there. So I'll actually be sticking the watercolour painting to this card. This has got a little bit of a satin sheen on it, a little squared card here. And this is a very similar card to that, but it's similar to the cream one here, little square card again. So I'll be using that just to kind of love I love square cards as well. I just love squares. <laughs> um, and this is another square card. It's got a lovely decal sort of surface there. So I'll be using that slightly bigger than that square and this one here too as well. It's more of a white colour there. I've actually got some watercolour paper here and I've actually got some just A4 card that I use for printing. Um, it just about gets through my printer but um, it's quite nice and you can actually make some cards out of it. And what I thought I'd do with both of them was trim these and make some smaller cards, but you can just make your own cards out of watercolor paper or thick blank sort of white card or cream card or whatever color card you have. So what you can do with these A4 cards, I'm just folding this in half like that and just make sure you've got it equal both sides. Just line that up there like that. I'm going to use my scissors there just to press that down so it's nicely pressed and you can actually use that now as a blank card a bit like my blank card here you can just use that they're about the same thickness as well and it probably is a lot more cost effective to buy sort of a hundred sheets of white sort of thick card and uh, make your own cards and you can make your own shapes and sizes as well and I can show you here you can make this into a little square so let's just try that. So I'll pop that in there, see if my paper cutter will cut it. So I'm going to make this into a more of a square card. Bring that over. I think that's about a square. We'll see. So it's gone through that quite nicely. I'll just go back again. Yeah. And lift that off. And there we are. It's not quite a square. <laughs> But um, it's quite a nice shape. You might want, you know, sort of different sort of shape. So, and what I'm going to do here, so I don't waste anything, I'm going to make another little mini card here. So a little square mini card. This time I'll try and get a bit more of a square. There we are, a little card. And you can also use these to sort of paint on as well, or do a little bit of line and wash. And with the watercolour paper, so this is a bit of an odd, this is a little bit of a remnant I had in my um, drawer, my little plan chest. And I'm thinking I'd like to make a card out of this as well. So it's quite nice to have. So you could do the same thing. You can fold that in half. Just make sure both sides marry up like that. Now, what you could do with these is you could actually just paint directly onto this. You could sort of mask out around the edge with some masking tape or washi tape and then paint your picture and then peel off afterwards. And that makes quite nice little cards as well. Or you can actually stick a painting onto one of these. Again, I love a square. So I'm just gonna make a couple of squared cards out of this as well. See if we can get, I don't think I've quite got a square again. <laughs> Um, this is where measuring and patience comes in. I'm not the most patient. Didn't quite get through that side there. So let's just line that up again. There we are, I've got a little mini card there. And there we are, I've got a nice little square. I quite like that deckled edge actually. So you've got a little card there as well. Is just get some washi tape. And this is about a half a centimetre wide but there's lots of different widths washi tape. And I just go, I buy mine from amazon.co.uk and I buy um, the washi tape that has the best reviews. So I, lot, and, and also the patterns that I like, you know, so um, just have a little check out, check out the reviews and uh, see which one you like. This is quite a pretty pattern. And what I quite like about washi tape is it doesn't tend to tear the paper. And it's nice to look at. So there's two good reasons to use it. And it doesn't tend to bleed through underneath either. So there we are. So you can actually sort of take the size, stick it down, paint your picture on there, and then peel that off and you've got a lovely white border afterwards. So I might make a little card out of this in another tutorial. So watch this space. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use little mounts and a little card with an aperture. And I'm just going to go through each of the paintings to see what works best as a card, 
or as a little painting. And it all sometimes depends on the size of the mount as well, or the aperture. And I'm just gonna use the little card, and I just think this will be so nice for a little get well soon or happy birthday card. You know, good luck. <laughs> um, you get some really nice, pretty sort of individual flowers here. That's quite pretty, isn't it, that one there? This is actually, look, look at that. That's really pretty, isn't it, for a little mini painting. So you could use something like that. We could go up here. I think there's probably just going round like that, just having a look, see what works. See what works for you. That's what I quite like doing it, just moving the card around. Or if you want different sizes, you could use two L-shaped mounts as well. And you can go round and just see what works. Different sizes, different lengths, like that to see what works. You may find that, I quite like that. It's quite lovely, isn't it? A little bit more of a rectangle with the little daisies there. Maybe bring that up a little bit more, a bit wider. So you can really sort of find it. If you put a big mount round your painting as well, and then you've got a big frame, it's amazing how a little painting can look so much bigger as well. Card here. To me, I think that's so pretty. And just even here, it's lovely. So as a whole, this didn't quite work as a painting. I got overworked it slightly, especially in this left-hand corner. But some of these little bluebells here just look so pretty. And actually, looking at this, turn it round that way. And you've got the little bluebirds to the side there. Look at that. That's actually a really sweet little picture. I find this so exciting, I really do. It's just like magic. It's like I didn't paint them. This way of working is so creative and it's so much fun. I really do get a lot of satisfaction of looking at my work in a very different way. It's almost like I didn't paint the picture and I'm just selecting these different areas that are so new to me because I'm looking really up close to them and it's very detached from the rest of the painting. And I'm looking at it in a really objective way just seeing little miniature paintings in there. And you can actually, what you can do sometimes with these, when you find a little magical painting, what you can do is you can actually sort of use this as a base for an idea for a larger painting. And you really are then working from imagination. It's a great way of working. And we've got this one here as well. And as you can see, there's some quite nice little miniature paintings here. Again, quite abstracty. This one here is stunning. There, that's actually quite a lovely watercolour, isn't it? Something I wouldn't actually paint myself as a painting, but now I look at it as a whole, it's just, oh, it's I just love it. <laughs> and just working my way along here, quite beautiful. But you, equally, you can use the bigger card or the bigger mount actually to find some pictures in there as well. That's quite beautiful. Again, you might see it differently. That's the that's the beauty of art. We're all gonna see these in different ways, but myself as the artist, when that painting pops out, it almost speaks to me and I just want to capture it sort of thing. So that's why I love doing this exercise. And this is on a cold press surface. It's a little white sail, but I just thought this would make a really sweet little card just with the little white sail, little bird there. You can move it up a bit. There's another little bird there. But it's just a quite a simple little painting that can work. And this is just one of my little practices. And again, in the foreground, it's quite abstract. And you could almost do something with your foreground as well there. As I said earlier, I really like this one, um, but I felt it didn't kind of, it was more of a kind of a simple sort of practice, etc. But once you um, put your little mount around it it really puts it in a different light look at that I love that little tiny little landscape there it's just so fresh and the light coming from the paper is beautiful I was quite excited about this one as I said earlier I wasn't really happy with the foreground it was a bit detached from the background but look at that and go in the center another look at the light coming there it's stunning absolutely <laughs> sorry praising myself but i'm really pleased with it i just love those soft colors so in this next section i'm going to start making the cards and the framed pictures 
hope you're going to enjoy this bit. I know I am. So I'm just going to this section here with this bluebells in the hedgerows painting. I'm marking out with my HB pencil just inside the little corners there. So always make sure your painting is slightly bigger than the opening so you can stick it to the back of the mount or the card. So what I'm doing here now is I'm using my paper trimmer and I'm actually trimming that little sort of square there. You can't quite see the pencil. I can see it. Um, you might want to use something darker like a pen if you have a darker painting. But I'm just making sure that I've got the right spot there before I cut. Measure twice, cut once. And I'm just going through that now. I love this paper trim. It's really simple and safe to use. And I'm just sort of finishing on now, trimming this little painting here, my little bluebells, really focusing in just on the bluebells as well. I'm quite excited to see what it's going to look like um, on the card. So I'm just sort of lining up there, just making sure I've got it squarely there. I'm going to turn it over now and stick it to the back with some washi tape. What I like about the washi tape as well is that if someone wants to frame this now, they could actually remove it from the back and actually get a mount and a little frame to frame it if they wanted to. I'm just using a bit of tape there as well just to stick down the card there as well, turning over. And there we are. Hey presto, there's my little painting. I'm just signing it as well. I'm really pleased with that. It looks lovely against the white card as well. So I'm just picking out another little painting here. I love the bluebells to the left here. Just marking with my pencil again just inside the card there. And I really love the light on the right hand side with the grasses. It's simple but it, it kind of looks good and I'm just going to trim that now carefully. Again make sure that you sort of line up, measure twice, cut once and just to make sure you've got all of your painting in and that your um, painting is bigger than the actual opening and there we are I'm just sticking that just slightly different now just little bits of the washi tape each side because this could be a temporary thing and I'm just signing and dating my little painting. Here's another little close-up and I'm getting carried away with this painting. I'm getting a lot of different cards here, bluebell cards. So I'm actually going to stick this onto one of my little square cards, ready-made square cards, so not the one with the aperture. So it makes it a slightly bigger sort of painting and I'm going to use Pritt stick to apply it. Now if you don't want to use something like that you could actually double over your washi tape and stick it so it's easier to remove. So it's kind of temporary if the person that you send it to wants to frame it. So I'm just signing again another one. I'm, I've actually put that one on the cream card as well. So I've got a real good selection here and I think I could actually get a couple more Bluebell cards from this original painting. So I'm quite pleased with this little set. So I'm using um, the white aperture card here to find a little painting here. It's the white sail. I really like this little painting. So again, marking it up with my pencil and you could make your own aperture cards by using the A4 blank cards fold them in half trim them to your size and then you could use a craft knife to cut out that little sort of aperture there any size that you wanted to so I'm just trimming my little painting putting this on the back again and sticking it down with some washi tape around the corners and signing and dating the painting ready to send off here's a little close up there quite like that one so I've got my little flower here. I could actually make about five cards out of this painting, which I'm quite pleased with, but I'm just going to do one. So I'm just making sure that where I trim the flower, I don't chop off another flower as well. So I've made sure that one to the right that I've just put to one side, I could still actually make a card out of that. So I'm just trimming here carefully. Um, and there we are. I've just stuck that on to the deckled sort of surface card there and signing and dating as well. I really like that against the white background as well. Looks really fresh. Be a lovely birthday card. I find it fascinating. One is looking for that little treasure in the painting and then sort of extracting it, cutting it, trimming it, and then either framing it or sort of laying it on a card. 
So this was my painting. I wasn't really happy with the foreground. It didn't kind of match up with that distance, but I just love these beautiful distant hills with the lovely sky. So I'm trying to get three paintings here. I do end up with two, but um, I quite like this one on the here and the left, and I'm just making sure that I have enough for the painting on, uh, definitely in the middle. So I'm just trimming there, and I'm gonna frame this one. So this is the mount. So I'm just sticking the card to the back of the mount there with the washi tape and I am signing the picture before I actually put it in the picture frame and dating it and I'm just placed it in the picture frame put the backing on securing the backing here and I will put a link in the description of a tutorial I made all about framing pictures so as you can see here's the finished framed picture and I've got a double mount as well and I really love it it really makes the picture look bigger and this frame is actually about eight by eight inches so I'm just finding another little painting here just by moving the amount around and again I love that light in the sky with those lovely sort of transparent washes there for the hills it looks quite dreamy um, so just trimming again just to make sure that the painting is slightly bigger than the aperture of the mount the opening of the mount there so just trimming away and once I've got my little picture I'm just sort of lining up the mount with the picture make sure the horizon is straight and as you can see there I've got both paintings framed and they make a lovely pair as well another bonus of using the same picture as well get a nice series so I'm just trimming this sort of semi-abstract sort of seascape painting here with the foreground and I love this little foreground here with the dark against the light so I'm actually sticking this on to the card the blank card that I made the little square card using my Pritt stick and I really like that and I'm actually signing below the painting now because it's so dark on the actual surface of the painting but you could use a white pen to do that so here's a little close-up I really love this card it's quite modern looking as well so this is the same painting and I'm just finding the top part of the painting I cropped the sort of lower left so I've actually stuck that on with the Pritt stick onto the card with the soft sheen and I love that it's sort of semi abstract I've decided to make lots of smaller cards with this painting. I love the little sort of landscapes um, with the reflections here. So I'm just marking out again with my pencil and again, just trimming the painting, making sure that the painting is bigger than the actual aperture. I'm sort of making sure it lines up with the pencil marks and using the washi tape to stick the paintings to the back of the cards. And I've made another card as well. That's a little square to the left of the center and they really make a lovely pair. I can hear some of you saying, don't cut that one. But um, I, I just like taking the risk as well. I'm learning all the time. You know, I just love sort of just getting myself involved and just sort of, you know, you, you do get a really different sort of feeling when you look at your work in a very objective way, finding those sort of magical little paintings, hopefully in some of your older paint pictures before you throw them out. <laughs> Please don't throw them out. This is my final one of the tutorial. So I'm just trimming here. I love this little sort of painting, little mini treasured painting in the center there. And as you can see, I have framed it with the white frame and double mount. And I'm really pleased with it. I love that sort of dark colors against that light sky. And here are the other paintings that I framed earlier as well. I'm delighted with them. So I really hope this inspires you to maybe frame some of your sort of off cuts or paintings that didn't quite work as a whole, but you can find hidden treasures. And here are all the cards that I made, sort of using all different cards, different sizes, lots of squares, as you can see, but rectangles as well. But um, it's really lovely to see your work presented in this way. You get, you, like I said earlier, you, you can be very objective and uh, find those hidden treasures in your old discarded paintings or practices. So when you think you, you're not good at watercolour painting and that they're not working, have a look like this. You may surprise yourself and, you, and it will give you the confidence to carry on and to experiment more and to try things out and to keep nice and loose as well and try out these different sort of 
cards and smaller pictures. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you'd like to support my channel and get access to exclusive weekly tutorials with downloadable outline sketches, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.